the Libre Pilot software, which is what we use to configure the CC3D, can be found at librepilot.org. And if you click More Info on the Download tab uh, and scroll down, you will find either a DMG for Mac or an EXE for PC. Once you run the installation, of course, allow it to make changes to your computer. Uh, the shortcuts are handy. No need for the AeroSim RC plugin, and I found that you don't need either of the, these two. And no need for the README, and we'll go ahead and let it open LibrePilot, and we're going to allow access. So here's the software. Uh, it's got a really nice graphical user interface, I think. Um, and the first thing that we really want to do is plug in our CC3D and then click the Vehicle Setup Wizard. I'm working with a uh, CC3D from Banggood. I think it was 12 bucks and it took about three weeks to get here. I've got some double-sided foam tape uh, and, of course, a blade. So when you open the package, it comes with three wires. Uh, these two are for, like, telemetry port or flexi port. We don't need those. We only need this one. So the first thing you do in your transmitter is make a new model, tell it that it's an airplane, name it, and leave it as a normal standard airplane. I know this is uh, a flying wing or a delta, which has elevons, but tell the transmitter that everything is completely normal. On mine, I get to pick a picture. Set up your flight mode switch. Uh, this is going to be your channel 5. And uh, this is my channel 5. I don't know if it's gear or flaps. It depends. But this is channel 5, and I've got uh, a three-position switch. The two-position switch also works well. If you don't have a channel 5, you're only going to have one flight mode at a time, which isn't a, a big deal, but moving on. So there we go. Throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, and gear. This is, you know, your flight mode right here. There it is, flight mode. Uh, and down here I have aux one for a, a knob or a slider. I never ended up using that. On my transmitter I have this really nice feature that lets me have different trims for each of my flight modes. So when I'm in manual I can trim the airplane out to fly level and when I flip over to rate mode everything is still at zero, which means it's not going to slowly turn one way or another. It's going to hold steady. Uh, and then again with the third mode, attitude, or self-level mode, uh, that's going to have its own trim. If you don't have separate trims, uh, then your plane uh, is probably going to need retrimming when you switch modes. But most of the time, you'll probably be in attitude mode or self-level, because that's the easiest. Uh, so you just set up a new model and go ahead and bind it with the receiver. And it's a good idea to look at like your monitor or display to make sure all the channels are moving uh, properly. It'll make things easier later. But the main thing to focus on is that when I move the flight mode switch, uh, the gear channel moves. And that's pretty much all you need. So when you connect the receiver to the flight controller, uh, you have to connect the channels with these. The first three, black, red, and yellow, that's going to be your throttle. And then for the rest of them, the color might vary. Don't look at the color, just look at the order. So think of this as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And here they are connected. So throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder, and then gear, which is flight mode. And aux 1, it's hooked up, but I never ended up using it. Didn't need to. Uh, on your receiver, of course, pay attention that ground is usually on the bottom or on the outside, and the signal wires are on the top or inside, generally speaking. Uh, same thing here. Ground is on the outside, so the black pins are going to be on the bottom, uh, positive in the middle, and signal on the inside. And it doesn't look like it from the top, but uh, all the positives are shared and all the negatives are shared. That's why we're able to just put a signal to each of these channels. Uh, so here it is in the airplane. Alright, here's a walkthrough on how to set up the CC3D with the uh, box wing airplane. This does also apply to uh, other flying wings in general. Uh, we've made a new model on our transmitter. We have rebound it to our receiver. And we have connected our receiver 
to the flight controller and the flight controller to our servos and ESC via this wiring diagram. We have removed the propeller from the aircraft and like I said earlier the transmitter is turned on the airplane is not powered, battery is not plugged in, and we're going to plug in the USB cable right now. And we wait. So what we're looking for are these colored bars down here. It's got the TX and the RX. It says that it's talking and listening. Uh, and if, if it's showing a red bar, I usually give it a second and wait and let it kind of calm down. So we're going to do the vehicle setup wizard. Uh, this says make sure your propellers are removed. We're going to erase all the settings that are on the board and upgrade it to the latest firmware. This is kind of a slow process, but just click upgrade and then be patient. Alright, finally it says board updated. Please hit next to continue. And we do. This just tells us that it's a CC3D board. It reboots. We have ours connected through PWM pulse width modulation, which is where we have one cable for each of the channels. Most of the time I hook it up through PPM. Uh, if I use a receiver that has PPM. But this is the most common, so that's what we're rolling with. And it is a fixed wing aircraft. And it is a flying wing, so we select Elevon. And we're using standard servos. There's no significant benefit from digital. I tried it. And here's that connection diagram that I showed you earlier. And it says that channel 1 is the left servo, channel 2 is the right servo, and channel 4 is the motor. You can change those later if you want to, but that's what it defaults to. Now it says output calibration. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to calibrate our ESC. Uh, so right now, as we speak, it is transmitting the full throttle signal to the ESC. The ESC is, of course, not powered which is good. But we definitely want to make sure the propeller is off so it does not suddenly spin up for throttle. So before I hit next, I'm going to plug in the power, plug in the battery, wait for the ESC beeps, and then hit next. So there is our beep. Now we click next, and then we click start to send it the low throttle signal. You heard the ESC acknowledge that, and we're going to turn this up until we get it to spin. Nice. Then we hit next, and we need to calibrate the output of our servos, basically the travel, the center point and the travel. So we click start to bring them online. Now when you when you move the max or min slider, of course the servo moves, but you don't get any indication as to the direction that it should be moving. If you move the center slider, on the other hand, it'll say up or down. And there you can see that the left servo should be moving up. It is not. So we're going to have to reverse that one. Let's check the other one. Move it up and down. It says up but the surface actually went down, so we need to reverse that one also. Uh, you can't reverse it unless you hit stop, then reverse it. Now we're almost done. Let's go ahead and set our uh, center points, which have that five millimeters of upward deflection. And that looks like 
this. And I do the other one, and it looks like this. Then we need to use our 20 degree throw gauge, throw gauge to figure out how much up elevator we get, which is that slider. There's our 20 degrees of up on one surface and 20 degrees of up on the other surface. And then for down elevator, where the surfaces move down, we want the opposite of the neutral position, which means just 5 millimeters of downward throw. Now the reason that we do this is because when we flip it to manual flight mode, we want the control surfaces to have reasonable throws. We want it to be flyable. I mean, as a human, you know, our reactions are limited, so we want normal throws. It also helps to have the default settings close to already tuned. Like you could fly this without changing any settings. It would probably oscillate at high speed, but you could fly it with the default settings. We click stop, click next. Uh, if you're using one of these two models, there are some pre-made settings, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, there's only two of them. We're going to go with current tuning or default tuning, and we're going to click save. <clears throat> now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set up our transmitter. The first box that pops up says the arming settings are now set to always disarmed for your safety, which means no matter what we do, we're not going to be able to arm the aircraft at this point. That's a good thing. We click next. Acro. Mode 2 with throttle over here. Now it says to move each of the sticks when it tells you to, so we're going to move the throttle stick. We're going to move roll, pitch, rudder, and then it says uh, toggle the flight mode switch repeatedly. So I just flick that back and forth a few times. Then it says uh, move accessory zero stick. So I have one of those, but I'm not going to use it, so I'm just going to ignore that and hit next. Accessory, accessory one, sex, accessory two, three. Now it says to center everything. I'm going to go to flight mode two and center my sticks. Hit next. Now I'm going to move all the controls to the maximum direction. So I'm going to go to flight mode three, both the sticks to the outside for a second, both the sticks inside for a second, both the sticks up, both the sticks down, and then flip it to flight mode one. Both out, both in, both up, both down. Then we click next. Now we make sure that everything moves in the correct direction, and it does. So we click next. By the way, if it didn't move in the right direction, you would just check the box to change it. So final check, make sure that does what it's supposed to, and it does. So we click next. Now we talk about arming. We're going to arm with zero throttle and yaw right to arm it, and zero throttle and yaw left will disarm it, which will disable the motor. Uh, don't do that in the air. You probably won't because you don't actually have a rudder, so you shouldn't be using that, but uh, be careful of that. Uh, and arming timeout, I set that to zero so that it won't ever go safe because of time. We're going to click save. Then we're going to go to flight mode switch. By the way, fail safe is best handled on your receiver's side of things. So with most, most receivers, when you bind them, uh, they do one of two things. Either when you turn your transmitter off 
to imitate losing signal, it either kills the motor and freezes all of the surfaces, or it kills the motor and moves all the surfaces to their bind position. Now, which thing it does depends on what you did with the bind plug. If you left the bind plug in during the binding, it's going to do one of those things. And if you remove the bind plug before binding the transmitter, you know it's flashing, but you removed it, then you bind the transmitter, it's going to do the other behavior. Some receivers do one thing, some do the other. But the key to success in a really, really, really safe airplane is to bind it in flight mode, for me, flight mode 3, which is self-level mode, which means and with the throttle at zero, which means that if I turn the transmitter off, it's going to kill the power and it's going to put it in self-level with the stick centered, which is going to make you glide and buy you time to lift the transmitter over your head or something like that to regain signal. So failsafe cannot be handled here. So here we want our three modes. So here's mode one, mode two, and mode three. So mode one we want to be full manual and we know that the airplane flies in this mode. Mode two is a little bit of stabilization. And this is rate. By the way, on yaw, I have them all set to manual because there is no rudder. Same thing with thrust, manual. So roll and pitch are manual, roll and pitch are rate, and then roll and pitch are attitude. An attitude is what they call self-level, where if you hold the stick a little bit to the left, it holds a little bit of a left bank angle. And we click Save. So here is the RC input. And you can see when I move the stick, these values change. There's roll. So uh, you can adjust the dead band which is uh, when it ignores little tiny changes, which is a good idea because the receiver signal naturally fluctuates a little bit. But one thing that helps big time is assisted control stick deadband. Bump that up to 10. That means that when the flight controller is, quote, moving the stick, you'll ignore uh, a little bit more of its inputs, which helps to keep it from oscillating, which is really nice. Uh, here's output, and everything is refreshing at 50 hertz. I know the ESC could definitely refresh faster, but there's no need with an airplane. With the quad, yes, big time, but with an airplane, just leave it all at 50. Uh, if you have to reverse something, like if you're hooking this up to a four-channel airplane, normally, even though you follow the, the wizard carefully, uh, and it tells you, you know, rudder left, and you make it go left, which may, would make the airplane go left, it's actually reversed, so you usually have to come in here to yaw and either reverse it or unreverse it to change it to work. If you change it on your transmitter, it'll appear to move the right way, but it won't actually respond the right way when it comes to stabilization. So here's attitude. This is a really important step here. Uh, we need to tell the airplane what level is. This is kind of weird, uh, but you don't want to just lay it on the ground flat and calibrate it. That is level, but the airplane, airplane because it doesn't have uh, doesn't have an airfoil, it needs to have a pretty decent positive angle of attack to generate lift, which means you need to put something under the nose. Uh, in the past, I've used uh, a battery, put like a 2200 underneath the nose, and then calibrate it. So I put a battery under the nose, and we click level. helps to hold your breath. I'm just kidding, but you really don't want to disturb it while it's doing that. And don't forget to hit, hit save. Now let's go to stabilization. This is where we adjust the settings for the particular airplane. Now I've already flown it, so I've already tuned it, worked out what settings work well. But I'll still talk you through uh, what they all are. So first thing first, we have attitude, and this is your maximum bank angle. So 55 degrees is a pretty low bank angle, which seems, you know, safe, like that's a great thing, but with a flying wing, you need more bank angle because that's what controls how much you can turn. So we're going to bump that up to 70 degrees. Rate determines how quickly the airplane can roll or pitch. 
in degrees per second. And this value, this limiting value, limits everything except manual mode. Manual mode is full manual, totally unlimited. You can do whatever you want. But if you're in either rate mode or attitude mode, how quickly the airplane can rotate is limited here. By default, it's only 220 degrees per second which is unbelievably slow. Like if you're 45 degrees to the left and you want to be 45 degrees to the right, it takes eternity to get there. So you need to bump this up. Uh, I like it at about 800 degrees per second, which is still less than the roll rate that you get out of full manual. So we're actually, you know, still limiting it. This number could be higher, but it seems to work nicely here. Uh, rate yaw, there's no yaw, but I'm going to turn this up just to keep it from somehow limiting anything else. I never use Acro Plus. Uh, I don't even know what it is, but I don't touch those settings. They don't come into play because I don't use Acro Plus mode. Now, let's talk about PIDs. So we got the P, the I, and the D. The D is hidden. If you go to Expert, I think you can find that. Yeah, here we go. The D value. I've never changed it. I've never found the need, but it is there. I only adjust uh, the P and the I. So because this airplane has such an amazing roll rate, uh, we need to decrease uh, the value for P roll. And by default, it's at 30. And if I were to fly it with these settings, everything would be fine. It would fly it great at about half throttle or three quarters throttle. But when you really give it a lot of speed and your surfaces gain more authority because there's more airflow going over them, uh, it's going to overcorrect. It's going to throw the plane too far to the left and then too far to the right and then back too far to the left. You'll get an oscillation, so you need to bring this value down. And I found that uh, it's really nice and stable, even at full throttle, which is quite fast for this airplane, with a value of 20. And in general, these two values should be about the same, so the I term also has to come down. And I found that 52 works well. For pitch, I did have to dull this one a little bit from 30 down to 26. I left the eye gain where it was. Uh, and for y'all, there's no rudder, so I just turn these down to zero, just so they don't somehow do something weird. Uh, the attitude stabilization, this is the outer loop of the control loop. I have this turned up to 50, and I have the other one turned up to 40. This makes it a bit more responsive when you're flying around in attitude mode. So when you're giving it full left and then full right, it'll quickly get back from one side to the other. Now, of course, in here, on my ESC, went into lost mode. Let me unplug it. When you're plugged into USB to your computer, you can unplug the battery, and it'll leave the flight controller powered. It will turn off your receiver, so you no longer have any RC input. Uh, but uh, I'm still able to adjust the settings, and I don't have to listen to that beeping. So there they are. Um, one more thing worth mentioning here is we need to uncheck this box. Uh, now, normally this box is checked to keep uh, multi-rotors from flipping over on takeoff. Like if you arm it and then slowly throttle up, uh, if it's not perfectly level, one of the motors will start to spin faster and faster and faster and faster. And when you finally do get off the ground, it'll flip. We have an airplane, so we want to uncheck that. Uh, this will improve the stability when you put the aircraft into a glide, like for landing. Uh, with this checked, when the throttle is zero, you get no I term, which means you will respond a certain degree to the error, but that error won't be able to get more and more and more correction from the I term. So uncheck that box, that helps. And I think that is it. I'll quickly show you all the tabs. So here's the flight controller haven't changed anything here. Here's the airplane. I haven't changed anything here. Here's the transmitter. The only thing I changed was I changed the assisted control dead stick uh, dead band to 10 instead of 8. Output didn't change anything here. Uh, you have the option to motor spins at neutral output when armed and throttle below zero. So some people on like quads and airplanes like it where if the airplane is armed, the motor spins slowly, kind of like a, a gasoline motor, motor idling, a little bit less dangerous than that. Uh, you can check that if you want to. I, I don't like it. We uh, gave it 
a slight positive angle. We stuck something underneath the nose and leveled it. We adjusted the, the P and the I term. No camera stabilization. TX PID has huge potential. Uh, this has the potential to change one of these values or multiple of these values at a time using a slider or a knob while the airplane is in flight. I want to do a video on that in a little bit talking about the potential here, but this is how you can tune an airplane to be perfectly responsive to what you want. But just by uh, seeing which axis shakes and then turning it down, like say you fly really fast and you get kind of like a, a, a dolphin nose up, nose down shake, you'd want to turn your, your P and I pitch terms down. Or if you go really fast and you get like a, a wobble side to side, then you want to turn these two down. You just land and adjust it. But this lets you adjust it in the air, which is pretty cool. And OP link, I think this is for telemetry or something like that. So we don't need that. Uh, surprisingly simple, I'm going to hit save. And before we fly, we need to do uh, one more check. We need to check to make sure that in manual mode, all the surfaces move in the correct direction. And then we need to put it in attitude mode or self-level mode and then physically tilt the airplane and make sure that the surfaces respond in the correct direction.